Welcome to this lesson on the refresh and sleep methods. After reviewing this lesson, you should be able to refresh the screen and delay program execution. Use the enabled property to enable and disable button controls. Now let's explore the refresh and sleep methods for a form. Uh, the refresh method is a way to force all of the controls and elements of a form to uh, redraw themselves. And that can be important uh, when changes have been made and other code has been uh, executed. And what happens is that uh, um, drawing stuff on the form is given kind of a low priority. And the reason for that is if you had to wait for every little change to render before the rest of the code executed, it would be very frustrating and very, um, uh, it, it would be interruptive of the user experience. So we can force a refresh when we need it by calling the refresh method. The other thing we're gonna look at is the sleep method. Sometimes when things happen, particularly visually, we need a little time uh, to process and, and assimilate that because at the computer speed, uh, it, things can happen so quickly that uh, we won't even see them, so it's hard to perceive. So we need to give them a little delay. So the sleep method will allow us to do that. And here's a, sort of a contrived uh, example that will need both of those. So uh, this is my take on the color viewer application. And if you've looked at the color viewer in the uh, textbook uh, uh, resources, um, they change the color of an oval and uh, to use the oval shape um, uh, control, uh, we need to add in one of the power packs um, uh, that isn't built in with uh, um, Visual Basic. And so rather than getting into adding the power packs, and they're there if you'd like to uh, download and explore them, uh, but rather than doing that, I'm just using a group box, and that also gives me a little caption here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change and cycle through different colors in the background color of the group box. So I've created two buttons, one just to exit and one to view the colors. And what we want this program to do is when you click view colors, we want it to cycle through um, different colors uh, displayed in the background of the group box. But I need to, number one, give you enough time to see the colors. And number two, if I have it changing one color to the next color to the next color to the next color and then going on and running other code um, what's going to happen is the form is not going to refresh before that code has you know essentially run past and so um, it won't actually refresh the form so we're going to have to force the form to refresh so that we can see the color and let's play with that let's do one other thing since once you start that sequence, we want it to go for many seconds showing the different colors before um, you can push this button again. Uh, let's disable the view colors button um, uh, for a time and then once everything is done, we'll re-enable it. So let's start with that. Double click on the view colors button. And uh, now we're looking at the click event for that. And uh, let's start by disabling that button. Okay, so now the button is disabled and somewhere further down we want to re-enable it. So I'm just gonna copy that exact line of code again and change enabled from false to true. And so what will happen is the button is pushed, the button becomes disabled, blah, 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 a whole bunch of other code will, that will add will execute and then at the end it will re-enable that button. Um, disabling that button is also going to gray it out uh, temporarily or change the, the, the border around it which gives the user a visual cue that in this context while the, the routine is running that that control is temporarily not available and that's a good thing. We always want to give the users some visual uh, and other kinds of feedback about what they can and can't do based on the state that the program is in. So that's a really good uh, user experience or user design principle. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, uh, see what we need to do to change the background color uh, of that control to blue. And so uh, change the background color to blue. Let's change the text of the group box to 
uh, the word blue. And let's leave out for now anything about refresh and um, sleep because uh, we'll just leave it hanging there as blue. And let's see if this much is running. So I'm starting the program and view colors. And indeed, it changes blue, um, uh, adds the, the, the text or updates the text. And the screen refreshed because really there was nothing else uh, in terms of control updates going on uh, in the meantime. And the enable disable happens so fast, you can't even almost see it, just a little blink. All right. So far, so good. So you're looking at this without the refresh or sleep, and you're going, well, obviously, Beck, we don't really need that. Um, what gives? Why are you wasting our time? Okay, let's play with this just a little bit more and see what happens. So let's do this. Let's add our routine at the end that we would like to change the color back to the uh, original form background color. Okay, so I'm taking um, the um, uh, the group box color, changing the back color to the same background color as is used by the, the rest of the form. Me is the context of the form, so it's going to go back to that sort of neutral gray. The neat thing about doing it this way is if you've changed your color scheme for the form or done something else, um, I, I don't have to know what you've changed it to. It's just going to go and match the rest of the form and then it puts the text back to its original. Now notice that between the time we are supposed to go blue and the time we're supposed to be back to the original, um, there's no intervening commands, but there's also, this is gonna be processing as fast as the computer can process it. There's gonna be no time to really appreciate or view the difference. And let's see what happens if we do it this way. All right, and click and wait. Nothing seemed to happen. It didn't go blue, and yet we didn't change that code, and all of the code that, that uh, uh, we're dealing with comes afterwards. So did it go blue? Was it so fast we couldn't even see it? Uh, not quite. What happened is that uh, we didn't get that uh, color change um, on the form rendered so it, was, it wasn't that it was too fast, it was that it wasn't even rendered because the form deferred the, the, the refresh. So, hey, I've got other code running here, um, and since you didn't ask me to refresh it, we're just going to move along. And so what I really need to do is come in here and add the refresh. So let's take this whole form, that's what is the me, and tell it, refresh. Now, there's still no intervening delay here, so it's going to force the refresh, but are we going to see it or is it going to blink? Because now, it, although we know it's going to render, it's going to be fast because we didn't stop to uh, smell the roses. We didn't stop to see the, um, the screen uh, and the change that was made in it. So we need to find a way to delay the program for a little bit. So let's try it now and just see what happens and click and <laughs> wow oh it sort of blinked blue did you see it try it again one time we caught it and now oh there we caught it again hopefully the video is catching that but sometimes we're seeing it if i hit it a whole bunch of times every once in a while we see it it, it, it catches it but the problem is the code that follows is immediately overwriting it with gray, and it's happening so fast, we're only occasionally catching a glimpse of it. That's certainly not what we want. So what we can do is we can add a um, uh, system threading routine. This um, threads are the different uh, processes of the running program. And we can say, hey, um, among the threads uh, for this program, tell it to sleep for a thousand milliseconds. So a thousand milli, and a milli is one one thousandth. So one thousand one thousandth is one second. So this is going to run for a second, and give us a chance to see that. So let's give that a try. 
and click. Ah, there we see it, and after a second it goes away. But we did get a chance to see it. Okay, good. So both our refresh and our um, sleep uh, are working. So sleep is just saying, hey, take this program and sort of you know pause it for this many clock cycles, um, thousand millishakes, and uh, it's one second, and then go on to the next thing. All right, so with that working, we can add the routine to add it or change it to yellow and to red. And so let's go ahead and, and paste those in. Okay, and uh, let me uncomment the code here. And so we'll change to yellow and let's uncomment the code here and change to red. So walking through this, we disable the button, we display the blue, refresh the screen and pause. Then we change it to yellow, refresh the screen and pause. Then we change it to red, refresh the screen and pause. And finally, we go back to the um, original color. And uh, if we want to be safe and consistent here, we probably ought to at least throw the refresh in there as well, just to make sure that, that refresh doesn't get missed, which would leave the, the screen hanging in red instead of um, back to the normal color that we wanted. Let's see if this works correctly. Oh, and the final thing, of course, is we re-enable our button. And now you're going to be able to see the button. See how the button is, is currently in context? And then it grays out, blue, yellow, red, and then the button comes back uh, to not grayed out to, to being uh, uh, clear text. And so you can see it's back in context. So now I can't push the button. Now I can push the button. And there's our blue, yellow, red, and back. Very good. So to sum up, We've um, seen how to use the disable method on the button, or actually, it's, it's the enable method. We just set it to false or true. It, false enabled means disabled. And then we see why we have to force a refresh. And again, that's a kind of a low priority thing. We wouldn't ordinarily want every little change to our screen that's that's pending while code is running to be given a priority we want the code to go ahead and run in a lot of cases you know we don't need to wait for an intermediate screen to refresh we want to get on with the rest of the task so um, windows is kind of uh, um, smart in the way it's been built there but occasionally we do want to make sure the screen refreshes so we can see an important visual change before the rest of the code runs so me.refresh will force that and then we can pause the code so that we can, you know, our human senses can take in what has happened. And so we can use the uh, sleep method to pause things, let it give us a chance to assimilate through our human senses what's happened with the program, and then resume back to the next thing, and so on and so on. Neat stuff. This concludes the lesson.